slash and cast. Hello, Courtney. Hello, Stephanie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. good. We have an exciting episode today. Uh, we do. We do we have, have a good episode happening. We do. We have a very special guest, a return guest. Might be one of our first return guests. I think it, I think she might be. I think she's that special. <laughs> <laughs> We have author CSO Canada hanging out with us. Hi. Hello. Hello. Thanks for coming back. Oh, it's good. How long has it been? It's been a little over a year, I believe. It's been, yeah, it's been a year. And it's been like a lot of stuff has changed, particularly in Canada since we last talked. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, the last time we spoke, I broke my finger. That's what it was. Oh. I was late because I got my finger stuck in the car door. That's oh, I do right. remember that. Wow. <laughs> and I came back with this stupid cast on my finger, a little <laughs> splint, and we had to push it back. <laughs> and Carol was awesome with that, too. We just seem to run late every time we meet with you. We're I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, that's right. Jeez. That's right. I don't know. Did, did you break any further appendages this time in my honor or just to recapture that? No. no. And... <laughs> No, and they're all accounted for too. Oh. So that's <laughs> we, that's good. That's good. She didn't break anything, and she still has. All I didn't of them. lose any of them. Yeah. Good job. I still got them. Congratulations. <laughs> How have you been? I've been pretty good. Uh, you know, things are back to normal up here in Canada as much as they can be, and uh, and it's been a great summer. And uh, yeah, I've I've been good. But um, good. Yeah, I've been. Uh, not writing, which is which is interesting for me. I'm uh, kind of like a field that's sitting fallow, I think, for a now a little while. So um, you know what? I, I think it's well deserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, I mean, we just recently had a book come out. Uh -huh. Oh, did you? So we got really. Give... <laughs> I can you? I I know this woman. She. Oh, uh oh. <gasps> uh, 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 uh. We got a copy <laughs> of your book. Uh, 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 uh. I can't imagine Carol, what it is. <laughs> She's a really fantastic author. You should read her book. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for sure. She's shit hot too, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> so since you haven't been writing, are you like like antsy about like, do you have ideas going that you want to write down or start a new book? Do you like? <sighs> no, you know what? Like, I mean, I've written, I, I, I put out four books in as many years and, and that's, mm -hmm. that's a lot. Uh, you know, there's people who take 10 years to write a book. And so, um, sure. during the, 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 it's funny, my books have not necessarily come out in order. So Eve's rib, my most recent <laughs> book is actually a book I wrote before, the book that came out before this so you know uh, and that book really killed me I wrote it during lockdown I had a house full of mm. um, 20 something girls that did not want to be <laughs> locked in with her their parents and um, I you know the book was about people getting murdered and and I it I was getting a lot of inspiration for that because I didn't yeah, think anyone there. was going to come out alive. So, um, <laughs> but you did. Yes, you did. but we did. And, you didn't murder anybody. Yay! <laughs> you didn't murder anybody. Yet. And instead, I I just I fixed up this novel, uh, which is about a psycho a teenage daughter, and um, and put it out instead. And so that wasn't getting any inspiration uh, from that situation either. So um, <laughs> I can attest that. She she is psycho. Mm. Like mm -hmm. she, ha she's got some, she's got some stuff. Got some demons. It's dark. I I've got some questions about her. <laughs> that we'll get to. Yep. Well, the book, as Carl said, is called Eve's Rib. That was the book. People can't see it, but I was like dancing around with it. We have yeah. our copy of Eve's. It's got Rib. a great cover, so, man. It's a great cover. It sure does. <laughs> we need a signed copy, as a matter of fact. Thank you. Uh, Look at that. Uh, we do have one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So do you want to go into a little bit more detail about, oh wait, before we go, are you drinking wine? I am in fact. <laughs> oh, what kind? Um, the red I'm variety. Distracted by the glass of wine. The red variety. Um, I think this is something that passes as a Shiraz Carber uh, Cabernet, but it's actually uh -huh. grown from wine in a uh, grapes from Niagara Falls, Ontario, which is, oh. is kind of a scary thought. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, does it taste okay? 
Um, you know, uh, oh, uh, delay. at oh, the end of the pause. day, so much hesitation. It, they all start tasting good after a while, don't they? <laughs> it does the job. It does the job. Niagara Falls <laughs> wine. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I poured you a Pinot Grigio, Courtney. By oh, the way. I did. It's lovely. <laughs> I love it. It's my favorite. I have a Riesling for myself. You know, we all have some variety. Oh, today. you don't. Ha- you're not drinking what I'm drinking. Oh no, I polished off the bottle of Riesling. And I need to get you wine, so uh, I poured you some Pinot Grigio. Oh, no judgment. But you like Pinot, so that's fine. I do. Is it it's from Brooklyn? Do. or the <laughs> Your Pinot Grigio? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, who knows? I mean, we drink out, we could technically drink out of a bottle. That one's so. out of a mini bottle. Um, uh, no. But I put it in a glass. Oh, you're trying to make me look good. Fancy. I appreciate that. Bougie. Fancy. We're bougie bitches over here. <laughs> So, Carol, do you want to go in a little bit more detail about Eve's rib and give everybody a big kind of synopsis of it before Courtney has her list of questions for you? Oh, yeah. I've got got some questions. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine you do. Uh, Well, you know, it's a a story about a family uh, told from three perspectives. Eve, the mother, her husband, Richard, and um, their 17-year-old daughter, Abby, who, as we've said, may or may not be a complete psychopath and uh, unfortunately... (laughs) Um, <clears throat> for the people who might be listening who have teenage daughters, sometimes it can be really hard to tell the difference. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so that's kind of where the story is coming from. Um, it's every one of the narrators in the book is is an unreliable narrator. Every one of them is keeping secrets mm-hmm. from the other. Um, and so it's bit about mother-daughter relationships with a bit of witchy crap thrown in and um (laughs) the rest of it is is uh, a spoiler and I can't tell you about it but some small fuzzy creatures get uh, killed and so I just want to warn that because uh, I had a few people who wrote reviews saying that I should have had um a warning label on the book (laughs) that told them that fuzzy creatures might get get hurt in this novel I, oh, i'd like to i'd like to point out that n- no fuzzy creatures were hurt in the making of this novel in the making of it <laughs> <laughs> that's important that's I mean, important I to think know that's very important mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> i mean anything can happen in fiction so i think it's okay as long as you didn't kill fuzzy creatures in real life i think it's a pass yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I don't describe I it in detail. I don't get any fun out mm-hmm. of describing fuzzy creatures in detail being hurt. No, I, they just, unfortunately, they do pass away. <laughs> so mm. they by the hands of some people, yeah. you know, whatever. Or, I, it's just... <laughs> maybe, or maybe not. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, who knows? I don't this know. This just means that everybody has to go buy their copy to get more detail. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to probably have to censor my questions because you know what? I didn't think about that. I might have to ask you questions after we get off the podcast. Okay, <laughs> okay. I can do that. I can do that. Because I, I have some questions that um, that are definitely going to have spoilers, okay. and uh, which I won't do. I won't do, I promise. Um, but there, there, I need some backstory. Or if you want to ask it, Carol can say, oh, I'm not going to answer that. Oh, yeah. You definitely can you tell can me You can be the judge up. if you want to oh, answer it. Oh, for enough. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would never. I would never. Okay. I, here's, I, have, a, I have a question. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. How long did it take to write this book? Oh, wow. You know, writing books is kind of weird, right? Because you can put it down and pick it up and you can put it down and pick it up. Mm -hmm. So like this... And you were saying that you were like writing another book and that was released before this book and this book was started before that one. Yeah. Yeah. So I wrote that book. Maybe start to finish took me five months, but then I put it away for a year and I brought it back out and I did all the editing on it. Uh, so mm. that was a, a big change. And one of the things I did, which I don't know whether it was the right thing or do, to do or not, but I, I took it from um, present tense to past tense. I've never written a book in past tense, but someone had told me that they were more marketable. I'm not quite sure if that's the hmm. truth. But um, anyway, so I wrote it. I changed <laughs> it all from present tense to past tense. And if you think that that's easy with like 80,000 some odd words and the go back and take it from no. present, it was it was a pain in the ass. So um, <laughs> yeah, so I fixed it all up and then I, I sent it off to my publisher and they said, uh, wow, that's the, we're, we're looking forward to that. A domestic thriller with, uh, witchy bits thrown in, uh, we're, we're game. So I was glad. Good times. Yeah. 
How did you feel like after you wrote it and then you took a year off and went back to it? Were there a lot of changes you made or did you still read through it? And you're like, all right, okay. I knew what I was doing. Uh Well, I mean, I think that's a lot the way it is. Like time and and, uh, is helpful that way because you come back and yeah, you're you're always second guessing yourself. And so when you read Mm -hmm. it and it's been a year, it's almost like you're reading somebody else's work. So um, yeah, I did like it. And I particularly liked Abby because she was just so Mm -hmm. goddamn evil and <laughs> oh my god i have a description of her do you, you want to hear my just de- okay hold on because i kind of i kind of wanted to talk about each of the characters to begin with just kind of like overview yeah. um but i said let me find her i said um some would say that abby may be a moody slightly narcissistic teenager with a side of serial killer tendencies hmm. <laughs> okay she crazy yeah she did. She crazy. <laughs> she she seemed a bit crazy, but you see, that's the thing I was playing with, and I think one of the characters even says in the book, like, um, if we were all judged by how we were as at seventeen year old girls, we'd we'd, oh, we'd all be deemed bipolar, Psychopathic. you know. Mm-hmm. And and I don't yeah. like to make you know something completely uh, gender stereotyping there either, you know. Uh, teenage, they, all adolescents, are, are their brains are not formed properly, it seems, and and that's backed up right. by science. But um, I I I developed this character by okay, taking my own, I have three daughters, God help me, that all made it through (laughs) adolescence, Um, my own experience as a teenager. And then I interviewed um, dozens of women I knew and asked them, what is the worst thing you did as a teenage girl? And so I rolled those all up into one character. So yeah, she seems she's, she's pretty out there. But at the same time, she might also just be a uh, normal normal teenage girl a normal teenage, a teenage girl, girl. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh that's kind of what what, what i was playing with uh with that because it, it seemed to be a common theme that every woman i talked to said that there was something that they did where they look back and they were like what was i thinking i can't believe i did that right. Well, I think with teenage girls too, girls just don't know when to stop talking. So boys may have the same thought process, probably not, but they may have the same thought process, but girls just tend to like, it. just, mm. there's no filter. Mm. Like it's, they do things and they're, they're like more influenced by the crowds and peers and yeah, stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and I think, I feel like Abby was very, she was all about herself and how her image and how she was portrayed and she wanted to make sure she was the best at everything and all that. So yeah, she was definitely a teenager, just a little crazier. <laughs> yeah. In my opinion. I, I had my 19 year old daughter at the time go, go over the diary entries to make sure that I got, you know, the whole vernacular right. And I didn't sound like a kid writing their diary in the eighties, you know, um, <laughs> so I got all the lingo down pat, but, <laughs> but That's a good resource for you. Absolutely. We mm-hmm. laughed our heads off reading because she is so over the top. Right. And that, that, and, she, and she, is, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you really, she said to me, you really captured that, you know, that incredible egocentric, uh, point in yes. people's lives where they really do think perhaps the world does revolve around them. <laughs> so. Yes. Mm-hmm. She definitely did. <laughs> yeah. She's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just have a random question. I, these are going to probably going to kind of jump back and forth, but these are just kind of things that had popped into my head. Like, is there, when you were starting this book or really any book that you've written, are there like, quirks or anything that you do or like superstitious type things or anything that hmm. that you do before you start writing like or during your writing. Away. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah kind of. Interesting. I don't know. What quirky things I do. I, you know, I, I would force myself to sit in the chair. That sounds really, really boring. Um, but it, it this is the only way that it happens, right? If you just sit there and say, I'm going to wait till inspiration strikes and, and just lay about and, I don't know, eat grapes, somehow <laughs> that <laughs> will come to you. But a lot of it is about sticking your butt in the chair and saying, that's it, I'm going to write. So I would set a timer for 60 minutes and I had to sit there and I had to write whatever came out. And then I would get a break. 
I would get like a 10 or 15. That's got to be so hard to do. And then I'd put it for 60 minutes again and I would go back. But I always know that it would only be 60 minutes. Do you know what I mean? Like it would mm-hmm. only be 60 minutes. Sure. And it sounds like I hate writing when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes well, no. you really have Structure. to push, you really have to push yourself to go. But I remember when I was writing this book, I had like a, a sign up, you know, some witchy things in the background trying to give me a little <laughs> bit of like a witch's broom and yeah. other things like that. And and a, a sign that said the witch is in whenever I sat down to, <laughs> to write it. So I guess I also had some props going on. <laughs> mm-hmm. Some motivation there. That's okay. Yeah. Um, with, with this particular book, and I don't know, I mean, I haven't read all of your books. I'm sorry. I will, I'll get on that. I promise. <laughs> okay. But this book, cause you were, you were saying before that, um, it's do each chapter is a perspective, a different perspective of, of one of the characters Yeah. is, have you written any more books like that or because I've never read a book because I, I used to read all the time prior to having kids when I actually had time. <laughs> um, but I I have not read a book where the characters had their own chapter. I mean, I thought that was a really cool and refreshing kind Perspective, of perspective. Sure. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. how to read a book and, and just kind of, you know, for that one chapter, you've got that character. Yeah. And and um you know, that's the way I did it. I mean, even as far back as Stephen King's The Stand, he did do multiple perspectives, but different people do it different ways. Sometimes your mind's chronological, basically, you know, one one ends and then th- th- this other character may refer to some of the things the other character went through yesterday, but for the most part, it's somewhat chronological. But other people will do things where, it's exact same scene, but it's being described by the two different characters. And I find those Total very interesting yeah. as well, right? You're, okay. yeah. you're, mm-hmm. you, you'd think it would be boring. I'm going to read the same thing, but it's not because you see this completely different perspective mm-hmm. from another person. So mm-hmm. they might refer to some of the things that the other character said uh, prior, but they, they, they have their own kind of timeline going on. So you're not getting that repetitive stuff. But that was the first time I'd ever done that. And it was kind of me stretching as an author to do that. Mm -hmm. But I also thought it would be just so much fun to get into all these different heads, right? You know, like um, the husband's head who thinks about sex, like, I don't know, 16,000 times a day. And (laughs) and (laughs) true. The daughter with her complete narcissism and the the mother mm-hmm. who, um, you know, is, is suffering from grief and, and uh, but also is holding a lot of stuff back. But that's the interesting part that each one of them is narrating their story, but they're holding stuff back because there's, you know, there's sure. things that they can't even really admit to themselves. Or in Abby's case, maybe she won't even write down <laughs> in her diary. Right. right? <laughs> I mean, who knows? It just depends on that specific moment or somebody that made her upset that she needed to, she felt like she needed to, you know, write in her journal and talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, um, this book in general, I mean, cause there's, I won't get into it, but <laughs> there is some trauma and there, there, this whole family is trying to, trying to get through. Um, but it's like, it's, it's re it's like a real life, like it's a real life scenario as far as, you know, couples going through life awesome. and like, mm-hmm. yeah, they're trying, they're trying to get through a difficult situation. And it's, it's kind of, I feel like I personally have never gone any, through anything like that, but I can see how it can, you know, people can take away something positive from this book and like, I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. Like this, this is going to happen. Sure. It, you know, it doesn't always have to be bad. They obviously separated, didn't know how to deal with it themselves. So they tried to fix it themselves separately and they couldn't do it. And then they ended, you know, the story ended up very nice. Mm-hmm. I, I, I liked it. <laughs> I'm, try- I'm trying to be, I'm trying to censor myself because I'm excited. <laughs> She's trying to keep your secrets. I'm trying to keep your secrets, girl. It's hard. <laughs> No, I'm glad to hear that because, you know, when I wrote that, and I know what you're talking, that kind of climactic scene where certain things are resolved, um, I cried when I came up with that end because I found it very, very moving, you know, that whole whole scenario. And possibly, I mean, this character, Eve, is the closest you're going to get to to me in a lot of ways, you know, although I didn't Mm -hmm. suffer the death of a child, um, it's, Mm -hmm. it's perhaps how I would be 
uh, if I had. And I, right. I really, I tried, you know, I've said to people, you know, if you're, you're looking for a witchcraft book, it's probably not, you know, your book. Um, it, what it is, 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 uh, I was kind of playing with the idea of a woman that possessed, you know, preternatural powers, let's say for a better, um, for lack of a better word, and uh, that even someone like that, who was preternaturally powerful, could be laid low um, and lose her agency and her power through grief and and maybe even depression, yeah. right? And so mm-hmm. that sounds like a whole big bummer. But it, <laughs> I thought it was a good <laughs> it's way. Real. It's real life, though. I mean, yeah. that's relatable, yes. yeah. And I and I hope that people would pick up something from that. That it doesn't it didn't mean that yeah, you would sure. be weak for something like that to happen or whatever. That this woman had like everything, uh, even even powers beyond the natural some kind of um the divine feminine or whatever it is and and she was laid low by this thing so Mm -hmm. um so yeah i i I, they're a real family there's some pretty unreal stuff Mm -hmm. happening for them but they are a real (laughs) family and i'm glad that you you felt that people can take away from that i mean much like my first book petra's ghost which we talked about the the first time Mm -hmm. um you know certainly there were you know dilapidated corpses following people on the camino but um (laughs) (laughs) yes how do you think it happened it was also I mean relatable too (laughs) it was also a tale about grief and forgiveness and and Mm -hmm. all those things as well and I had a lot of people write to me and tell me that it really spoke to them this one I have more you know I was at a writer's festival uh, last weekend and uh, I read from the book and and, and they knew it was about, you know, psycho teenage daughters. And, and every woman who came up with the book to be signed said, I have a 16 year old daughter. And we all, we wink, you know, and we yeah. say, okay. like, I know. And yeah, I know. every one of them came, I understand what you're saying. So um, this book is for you, ladies, those who have uh, had 16 year olds, those who have been 16 year old daughters and those um, mm. who someday, uh, 16 years from now, I'm, I'm, uh-huh. I'm telling you, I'm looking at you, <laughs> Stephanie. Um, <laughs> you'll I'm say, sweaty I don't so know what that woman was talking about. Oh, my God. Yeah. I think you're going to call her and say, Carol, you were right. She's yeah. crazy. <laughs> I changed my daughter's name to Abby. Yes. It's gotten real. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But my- I think it's nice to show too, because even like Petra's ghost, and it's like everybody grieves differently. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's normal and that's fine. And you're allowed to be you and do you and cope with how you do things. I mean, to an extreme, but it's fine. To an extreme. You know. <laughs> no you killing of furry feelings. creatures. You know, that's that's a problem. No, no, no. Let's not do that. But however you have to feel your feelings in a less harmful way well, is acceptable. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so I think it's, is it, is it okay to say that, um, that Eve does is, has some witchy skills. She does. Mm-hmm. She's got, she, she mm-hmm. does have that. Um, her friend Janet. Okay. Let's talk about Janet for a minute. Is Janet based on somebody? J- Janet. Go like ahead. No. <laughs> is that what you're asking? Is Janet based on somebody that I know? Do you, yeah. do you, she, Janet? She wa- she's asking that question. I have another, I have, have another to say name. <laughs> Do you have a friend that is AKA Janet? <laughs> sort of. I always change them a lot. I do have a friend le- who, named Janet who who was my friend in high school, just like Eve's friend Janet, and she's an artist. So, um, mm. and she does funky, funky, crazy art like uh, like that. Um, I, I know she. What was it? She did something like the the melding of a baseball bat and 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 something else and it was a commentary on I, I don't know uh, sexualization in sport or something <laughs> so that's it Janet did something weird like that um, but I know my friend uh, she once did a Venus de Milo sculpture and she stuck mm-hmm. batteries in the head and made it into a working radio and gave it to me so yeah definitely I was channeling her very eclectic yeah very eclectic okay. Janet sounds fun. <laughs> she does. She's uh she's my kind of girl. Uh-huh. I mean, cause she just she waltzes up in your like uh-huh. I had I actually had a friend like this growing up as well. But uh Janet just walks into Eve's house, she goes in the refrigerator, makes herself a large Helps snack. herself. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, it's real comfy. But she's like so real. Like she's she knows who she is, she knows the powers that she's got inside of her. 
and she's just herself and she tells Eve, you know, the way it is. Yeah. Like it's it, like mm. you, you just need to like do what you need to do. Like it's She's that friend, and I love her that's for awesome. that. Well, and everyone needs to have that friend, right? Uh, that's yeah. that that friend who comes and and knows you so well that you know, and and calls you on your shit, you know, as well, right? <laughs> that's I think she would yeah, say yeah, when she calls 100%. her on her bullshit, she can do that as well, yeah. right? And um and and even you know the fact that you know we 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 talk a little bit about how they they that she could tell that her friend was in trouble because they have something a little more this um, connection, connection mm-hmm, yeah. beyond um, mm-hmm. beyond just the telephone. But in reality, the, the whole idea was that a lot of women uh, seem to share that kind of thing where you know when your friend is in trouble. You, you They answer the phone, they Absolutely. say hello, and you say, okay, what's wrong? You know? What's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. I'm coming over with wine and cheese. <laughs> yeah. And if the, if your friend says, I'm fine, you you, you say, that's bullshit. Uh, bullshit. You know? so, 100%. Exactly. So, so yeah, so it was playing a lot with with that and 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 of course they develop their friendship as teenage girls so you know and she's reminding Mm -hmm. her she's said you know don't you remember when we were teenage girls the shit we got up to like don't worry (laughs) right what is what is their backstory like i i know that based in, in the book that they you know obviously they grew up together and they have this connection was the connection because of their friendship growing up or did they have something that do they have some kind of history of some sort or how did that how did that work is there any backstory to that um well I mean I guess Janet sees her and she recognizes in her like Janet comes from a a long line of witchy folk and um Mm. and so she her her grandmother has taught her all these things and everything but she recognizes gotcha. that mm-hmm. Eve has something like this and so she helps her cultivate it um you know uh, that character uh, it, it, they didn't have a romantic relationship they tried but they but uh, Eve ended up laughing too much um she- <laughs> <laughs> And that's when she knew she just couldn't do that. But she loved her, you know, she loved her very much. And she would have, in some ways, she might have liked to have done that. But yeah, she was, she was just firmly on the hetero side. So yeah, Mm -hmm. they didn't have that kind of thing. But yeah, that, but but definitely, like you, you ladies probably remember when the friends you had as a teenage girl, the best friend that you had, there is something almost magical about it. And it is, in you Mm know, um, it's a very, very strong bond. You don't, I don't know whether Mm -hmm. we ever have female friends like we did when that best friend as a teenager. Um, Maybe that's a, there's a good reason for that, but anyway, Mm -hmm. it's a special time in life. And so that's why it's really good for Eve to have somebody there who remembers her when she was young and, and when she was, when she was, had her power and her agency, right? Mm Mm-hmm. She knows who well, she is. Well, because Janet knows her capability and what she is able to do. And obviously she knows she's going through a hard time. Mm-hmm. So she's just like, just do it. Like, you, you're not going to know if you can't, you know, you, you can do it or not if you don't try. Yeah. Like, you got to get your book out and you got to do your stuff. Mm-hmm. Just try it. And she helps so, her. But like, she helps her. She does. Yeah, she's better after Janet arrives. So I think that, yeah, I wanted to show that that's what could help people. But also they get up to some hijinks together, which is fun. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell that there's some fun history there yeah. <laughs> between the two women. Yeah. Uh, what was um, your favorite thing about writing this book? Was it a like particular character? Was it you know the writing of the book? Was it the plot? Like what 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 do you like most about this book? Or what would you what are you most proud of? Getting back at my family. <laughs> <laughs> and telling them what they've been doing to me for the last how many years <laughs> um do you know it's so funny because I started writing this book I got the idea for this book and I started writing it and I had a broken rib and of course Eve has a broken rib at the beginning of this story which is which is where Eve's rib comes from but it's of course also mm-hmm. a play on the biblical story so um 
so I felt that I felt that my family was really like my husband and my te- my youngest teenage daughter, who was still at home, were just not giving me the appropriate amount of sympathy and uh, care that I deserved. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did, so I made them into these, you know, pretty nasty people. And I had to tone it down because, you know, my the first beta readers I got, they said, "Oh my God, I like these people are so horrible. I can't." <laughs> I can't possibly identify with this book. I mean, the, you know, uh, so, so funny. it's funny because I, I have had people say, oh, my God, everybody's horrible in that book. And I said, yeah, well, you know, that was the point. But I it's I actually toned them down, if you can believe it. They weren't uh, You should have bad. seen them in the first draft. <laughs> yeah. So uh, some of it was to work out that and, you know, every bad thing they ever did. And when my husband first read it, he was like, he was absolutely his face crumpled and he goes, is that the way you see me? Okay, whatever. It's just a book. So so I did enjoy working out some of that. But I I must say, I did enjoy the Abbey Diary entries. I had, it it was as a writer to like just throw all, um, all, all, anything, everything. (laughs) Yeah. Because that's what a diary is. You just throw it out there, man. And you don't think about Mm -hmm. any kind of structure. You don't think about anything. It's just a stream of freaking consciousness. And that Mm -hmm. being said, it's not like it wasn't like in some ways it's more difficult writing because you need to like communicate certain things, but you have to really speak it in the voice of that character, et cetera, et cetera. But Mm -hmm. um, I had a blast and I've, I've seen a few reviews where people said, if there was a book that was nothing but Abby, they would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, every time that I was reading Abby, I'm just shaking my head. I'm like, oh my, uh, she is just a lot, a lot, yeah. a lot. She's a lot. Yeah. Mm. And and I, but um, my daughter is not like I'm going to say right now. Although she <laughs> looks like Abby, because I did, I. God bless her. I painted the picture of, of, of the daughter that I had in the house at that time um, when I was thinking <laughs> of the character. Uh, my daughter is not like Abby. Abby, as I said, <laughs> is a, is a, is an, a, a, a Frankenstein's monster of every nasty <laughs> thing a teenage girl has ever done. Um, but mm. um, so that's why I was really glad if you, if you, <laughs> If anyone saw my Instagram last night, my that daughter and I uh-huh. were out partying our faces off Party. to yeah, celebrate. You were. You were. Yeah, so um, she forgives me. <laughs> <laughs> when you were interviewing um, some teenagers and friends, and they were giving you stories of some stuff that they've done, what was the one that you remember the most? It can be like the worst one that you heard, mm. or. The one that you were like, oh, but maybe okay. you had to like cut out. I mean, it could have been one of yours. I don't know. But, you know, maybe you were like, I don't know if I could put that in there. Well, I already told you guys in my last interview about the one where I wrote threatening poetry to a kid we called <laughs> in the locker. Yeah, that yeah. was really mean. Oh, poor kid. It was really mean. Legend has it he's still traumatized today. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of them I, I used in the book. Um, Gosh, I don't know what to tell you without it being a real downer. There was one I used in the book. It was a true story about a girl who was walking down, um, a girl uh, walking down. It was not popular. um, And she was walking down the hallway and her sanitary pad Mm -hmm. falls out of her pants somehow or out of her kilt. Yeah. And everybody kicks it around and laughs at her and everything. And like, I know it's horrible, but, but. A it's woman normal. I know tells me this story and she said, and we, and I sat there and she says, I didn't laugh, but it didn't do anything. Oh. Which is kind of just as bad yes. as not. And she yeah. was, still, she still. was so ashamed to tell me that story and I used mm. it in the book. And uh, of course, mm-hmm. uh, Abby sits there and says, well, you know, um, stuff like that happens and and uh but she abby believes that it happens to people who deserve it <laughs> I think it's, it's like, like karma's a bitch yeah. she, yes. <laughs> she is all about karma that is for yes. damn sure she said karma's a bitch and and she makes mm-hmm. her own karma and um so she feels everybody else should be able to make their own karma and she does not have much compassion but yeah that was one of that one in the one way this wasn't girls but they told me and i used it in the book as well about these guys who would like fasten a beer 
uh, cap to their head with the nasty yeah. part sticking out and then headbutt guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That true story. She was telling me about that Why? at parties. And once Why again, do did not do that, but sat mm-hmm. there and, and watched that happen and didn't, didn't stop it or didn't say that it, there yeah. was something, you know, that they shouldn't Going do it. On right. There. And I think that's right. what's often hard for, for teenagers is that, that, you know, everybody wants to be accepted. And so they, they're too afraid to come out and, and, and defend the, the, the people who are being bullied or being, you know, having these things done to them because they're too afraid that they'll be the next one on the list. And that's just sure, unfortunately they don't want to target, yeah. where it is. But, um, but yeah, those are those are kind of downer things. It's, I think that my mm. my threatening poetry is a whole lot more fun <laughs> <laughs> and creative, <laughs> but also not it's very not very nice. <laughs> I mean, whenever it's you start nice. off a poem with "Dear old Funnelhead, how I wish that you were dead," you're not a nice person. Mm. <laughs> Mm. No, you've got some internal issues. And not for nothing, Carol, you're better at rhyming than that. You know, you're better than that kind of a rhyme. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I don't know where their funnel head would think of me or that I'd become a writer, but he's probably glad I didn't become a poet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, will you read us some of your story? Sure, sure. A little passage, little little passage. I can read you a little passage. Okay, so this is actually, um, this is actually the preface, which is like eighteen years before Eve becomes uh, a mother of a teenage daughter or any of that stuff, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, it, it's kind of powerful stuff, but also it sort of sets the, the the stage for this. Like I said, I try to play with a lot of dark and light in all of my books. You might remember from Petra's mm-hmm. Ghost, there's mm-hmm. humor in it, even amongst, you know, grief, you know. Some darkness, so, yep. um, So that's why Abby's passages are often a lot of fun and over the top because they give us something, a little break. But so here's, but this is kind of some of the deeper stuff. Um. Eve could see for miles, using only her mind's eye, whisper suggestions that allowed others no choice other than to follow. She could do all this, but she could not keep a baby inside her for nine months. Despite all the spells she knew, despite medical technology, that magic escaped her. Even IVF, that modern-day womb conjurer, was not an option. Eve had no trouble getting pregnant, only staying that way. Eve had never asked to be a witch if that's what she was. The word was only a close approximation of her nature. Most people, she supposed, did not get much of a say in who they were. The act of becoming was an organic process rather than a conscious choice. What we want has to percolate in the atmosphere along with what was meant to be before it's distilled enough to rain back on the world as destiny. If you've ever stuck your tongue out to catch a raindrop, you know wild things don't taste the same as the contrived, and fate was a wild thing. Nanny had been the first one to tell Eve the story of the ragman. That's what she used to call him after the tinker who came around the house when she was a young girl, sporting his jacket full of wares. You don't want what he's selling, little girl, she told Eve late one night as she and Janet sat with her at the old farmhouse Nanny kept at the lake. You gotta promise, Nanny, you won't answer the door if the ragman calls. Eve had nodded her ponytailed head that sultry evening and promised, but that had been a long time ago. Eve closed the door to the empty nursery and made her way to the bathroom. Sitting down on the toilet, she watched as the first drop of blood fell into the bowl, blooming in the water like a rose. Soon it was joined by others, making the crimson bouquet complete. It didn't take as long as the last time. When it was over, she cleaned herself up and showered. Then she went downstairs to the kitchen table and got the box of chalk she'd bought that morning. Pulling on the rope that brought down the stairs to the attic, she climbed them with heavy steps like a woman mounting the gallows. As Eve drew the pentagram on the floor of the attic, tears mixed with the dust of the chalk, she stood and surveyed her handiwork, trembling. Then she laid down with her flat belly at its chalky apex and bought everything the ragman had to sell. Mm. And 
that's where it all starts. That's where it all starts. And that's why she's a little concerned that Abby might be different than the other kids. <laughs> uh huh. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that that's a valid, I think her question, I mean, I think as a parent, you question everything anyways, whether you're doing right or wrong or something's happening or whatever, sure. but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would be the same as Eve in regards to my child and being crazy. <laughs> yeah. When you use a pentagram to get preg- pregnant, you know, you got to have these concerns. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> I would. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah. So that's sort of an idea of what happened 18 years ago. And then we totally fast forward mm-hmm. to where we are now and uh, this family. And, and I've hadn't said much about Richard. A lot of people hate Richard. I, I, I want them to hate Richard less, her husband, because he's... Mm. I don't, and I don't hate, I don't hate Richard. Good. I feel like he was trying, he was doing his best. And of obviously he was having some missteps, but Eve did too. So yeah. it's just like, he tried to make himself feel better because him and Eve couldn't talk. Like mm. they weren't, they couldn't connect. Mm. They were having issues with that. So he was just trying to find some refuge. I mean, I understand that. Yeah. I think extent. she refers to him <laughs> at one point as his, her imperfect, perfect man. And, and, and that was another thing I was playing with, you know, in relationships. I can remember one time when I was pitching this book, I said something along the lines, if all marriages were an open book, not many would support, uh, survive the reading. And so, yeah. you know, this is, we get to hear both, from both Eve and Richard talking about their relationships and their deepest thoughts and things they would never tell one another. And they, I, I don't care how close you are with your, your partner. There are things you're never going to say out loud. No, and so, sure, yeah. you know, um, and, and I played with that there. And some people were like, oh, Richard is so horrible because he thinks about sex all the time and other women and I'm like okay are you really (laughs) deluded because they all do that and so a hundred percent and I mean us women do that too (laughs) I mean I mean come on right right um but you know and you can make mistakes and you can make missteps and you can still be a person who who loves and a person who's you know who can be redeemed right so Mm -hmm. uh Yeah. yeah Richard is is one that doesn't get talked a lot about in the when I when I talk about the book, because a lot of people are are really identifying with the whole mother daughter thing. But the point is, is that yeah. this man is is one third of the book. His story is one third yeah. of the book, and um, and we get a better understanding of where he's coming from and a lot of the things that Eve doesn't understand about him, and mostly because he can't communicate him. So you know, he is a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Seriously. But you can tell. I mean, they loved each other. Mm-hmm. They and they respected each other. And I think they kept those secrets to keep their marriage intact, I think. I mean, because they it didn't sound like they were planning on getting a divorce or anything. It just felt like they were going through a rough time and they were trying to make it. And then finally at the end, he's like, All right, let's let's see what we can do. Yeah. Let's let's see if this, you know, see if we can make it work. It's time to step up, Richard. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Please. Don't be a dick, Richard. <laughs> Don't be a Richard, Richard. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, but I really liked all the characters. And I mean, I'm just going to pass it right over Mark because I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't with Mark. <laughs> Mark makes me angry. He does. and But it's hard. It's hard to talk about him because he's a big character too. Yeah. And he's got lots of his own secrets. So... I don't know. I'm not, I was not happy with some of the things that he was doing to Eve. I was not, mm-hmm. I was not pleased with that. And that w- that actually surprised me, but not in a good surprise, Carol. <laughs> I was not happy. <laughs> She's like, Carol, you hear me? Car- Carol. Carol, you know, hear me? I have to destroy everything that's sacred. You know, like I can remember when I wrote the <laughs> Petra's Ghost and this woman writes mm-hmm. a, you know, review and says, how could you do this horrible thing to something as beautiful as the Camino? Okay. And so similarly, yeah, Mark is this character who you think is a a loving, caring um, force that might be in Eve's life. Um, Yeah. uh, And, and he's not, Um, he turns out not to be much um, and, uh, and controlling and all sorts of not good stuff. And so, um, 
yeah, so I, yeah, I can see how that would be upsetting. And, but I think that that was, you know, every novel I ever see, there's, the, the, you know, the people talk about story arc and all those things, but there's also um, what they call the, 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 what is it? The, no, I keep thinking Night of the Living Dead. It must be because I'm talking to you two. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. It's, it's, we have it's, on people. It's a long <laughs> night of our despair or whatever. You have to like actually take your your character to their absolute lowest moment. Yeah. And that's when things that's often where the climax comes after that, right? Because they have to mm-hmm. they have to hit rock bottom. And it is because of Mark yeah. that she truly hits rock bottom, right? So I can imagine yeah. that, yeah, that's... I mean, if people didn't like Richard, what did they have to say about Mark? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> no, really. Yeah, nobody, Mark, nobody said Mark things about Mark. Here. Women have a real <laughs> problem with men who cheat. And that one, I won't worry about the spoiler. Richard is cheating people, okay? You find that out yes. like pretty soon. So I don't feel badly <laughs> telling sure. you that. Um, yeah. And so he's an asshole for that and everything, but... <laughs> I think she did too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. So, so well, I mean, and I know there's like you know the probably know the book uh, Gone Girl, right? Um, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, uh, and the one woman getting back at, at a man for cheating. And um, I I've known women who couldn't even read that because they were just so upset about the cheating part. And oh, I'm boy. like, you know, that's really bad. But you know, there are people who murder other people and stuff. You know, there is right. worse. Sure, in the right. World. Sure. But that, you I know, know, I, yeah, that's the word. I get it. Yeah. But yeah. The people who can commit genocide, but no, that's that guy who's, you know, slept with but a, not a the cheating guy. Not a pika. <laughs> that, that guy is going to hell. <laughs> I think we should just let's just not kill people. I think that's probably. I think that's a good kind of general. It's a first commandment, isn't it? Is it sure. the first commandment? Thou shalt not kill. Yeah. Yeah. I know that right the adultery it. thing is in there as well, but it wasn't number one. No, <laughs> right. It wasn't. They that skip bad. right over it. <laughs> And, you know, if my husband is listening right now, this does not give you an out in any way. So make sure you understand that. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> this podcast does not condone cheating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I, I absolutely love the book. I mean, I thought, I thought you're very welcome. And I'm not just saying that because you're on here with us. I legitimately love the book. I like the way that it was laid out. The characters were batshit crazy, which was fantastic. It added some, like, levity to it. And I don't know. I just loved it. Oh, thank you so much. You did such a good job. I'm glad because I was stretching with this one. This is probably the most, as an artist, I was going the Mm -hmm. farthest with. And, um, and so I'm so glad to hear that. That's great. No, it's, um, Mm -hmm. it was awesome. It's a super, and it's getting a lot of attention. I'm really pleased. Like I, 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 you know, I think it's the, so much with a book is whether the premise is going to be something that resonates with people. You can have a fabulous mm-hmm. book, but if the premise does not resonate with people, nobody's going to pick it up and buy it or read sure. it. Well, I think it's got it's got a lot of stuff that people can pick out a little of bit it. Of everything. It a little really sprinkles. does. Mm-hmm. A little, little sprinkles. A little sprinkles of stuff. <laughs> But yeah, I think it has little parts and pieces that I think that a lot of people are going to be able to relate to the book in some form or fashion. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. but a little good. something for everybody. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait for the questions later that you couldn't ask me on the. Oh, show. I'm going to ask. I got, I've got them. <laughs> and I had, and I felt like I had to censor myself because I had, because when I wrote all my questions out, I wasn't thinking in the mindset that I was going to I'm be like spoilers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, and then I sat down, I'm like, oh shit, yeah. what am I going to do now? But I think I did pretty you good. You can't give them everything, you know, <laughs> no. it's a little taste. No, but yeah, no, I hook do. them a little bit. <laughs> I'll ask the questions after the podcast is done. Don't worry. Well, Courtney asked important questions. Okay. And I have a bunch of stupid questions. Yay! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it. <laughs> okay. Are we ready? I'll start off with a, like an, an easy, not as exciting one. Okay. Well, why do we want to do it if it's not exciting? Well, because I have some like really random ones in here. Okay, I'll start off with a really ridiculous random one. Since okay. we're on topic of like things being potentially dark and a little weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> would you rather be attacked by a crow or a bat? What the? See? That's your question? That's what I'm starting with. I can't. Okay. 
a, oh, Ooh. Carol's giving it some thought. I'm, she really is. I know. I'm it it, well, I'm thinking about the birds, you know, uh, uh, Hitchcock's The Birds, and that was not pleasant. But at the same time, bats, I'm always... Are you thinking about rabies, rabies. with bats? That's I what I'm thinking about. I don't know whether that's yeah. a myth or not, but I'm I'm going to go I'm <laughs> gonna go with the real. crow. I, the crow, I'd <laughs> rather have the crow, man. What about if they get pecked than get rabies? What about the bird flu? Oh, I'm kidding. Yeah. That's not but, part of the bird. I don't think that's I mean, a, that's not that made been, by a bird, is it? I don't. I don't know. I don't. We don't know things. It's fine. <laughs> I would go with crow. Also, I'm going to go with a crow just to be safe. <laughs> there's no crow pox, okay. is there? So as long as there's no crow pox, not yet there's not. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Give it time. There will be. <laughs> okay, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life. What would it be? Ooh, that's hard because I really like food a lot. I know. Are you guys, get, it's only for me to answer, or like, am I supposed no. to be an answer? No, yeah. I think. Do you have an answer? Go ahead. Like, I, I can. If there was I'm only one think, food you know. I could eat for the rest of my life, well, unfortunately, yeah. it would be cheese, and then I would die of a colon blockage. Mm. So I. <laughs> <laughs> Death by cheese. It's Carol's next book. Yes. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> Death by cheese. From Ajmatab. <laughs> what would I eat? That's so hard because I just like a lot of food. I'd probably eat tacos. Oh, God, I love tacos. And I, because I feel like you have the vegetables, you've got the meat. You still got some variety. Yeah. Yeah. See, I didn't know I we could do choice. combination foods. I, I should have picked shepherd's pie or Let's something in that case. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Call. I like shepherd's pie. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm more of a chicken pot pie girl myself, okay. but you You're know. You're spending way too much time on this. <laughs> Answer the damn question. <laughs> I think tacos is a really good answer. Okay. Um, okay. Would you rather be in a real life version of The Walking Dead or Jurassic Park? Oh, this is easy for Courtney's me. Courtney's picking The Walking Dead. Of course Because I am. she hopes that I will too, so she can use me as bait. Everybody knows this. <laughs> She's going to trip me, cause you a know, distraction. Zombies will go, ah, attack me, and then yeah. Courtney will run away. I really wish that I could have been – I'm sorry. I, I just jumped all in this conversation. But here I go. So I really wish that I could have been a zombie and, like, been – like, gone up to Georgia because that's where they filmed Oh, to be, like, an uh, extra dead. in it. Mm -hmm. I would – so be down for that. Mm. But they're, you know, they don't make it anymore. So it's fine. Seasons mm. are almost over. Whatever. I'm if you want to be a zombie for Halloween, you can. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you can Appreciate walk it. the neighborhood. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I've, I've been to some, you know, conferences and stuff. And I've been in the real life version of The Walking Dead. So I think I'm already <laughs> there sometimes. <laughs> over it. <laughs> okay. I think I picked Jurassic Park. Of course you would. I just hate zombies. I know you I'd do. I'd rather deal with a dinosaur and like try to like maneuver past a dinosaur than a zombie. They're going to eat you. Oh, they're fast too. It's not a good choice. No, it's not. But I hate zombies. Well, so you're going <laughs> to die either way. So it's fine. Either by Courtney or by dinosaur. Right. So that's my fate, I think. <laughs> well, zombies, still, as scary as they are, they always seem so funny. I mean, like things like Shaun of the dead i laughed so hard oh, i thought oh, it would I die Sean so I, I have this feeling that i would die still laughing while someone ate the brain <laughs> so whereas jurassic park it would just be that raptor screaming at me and giving me a headache Ugh, and that's annoying <laughs> yeah. i know yeah. god but like, jeffrey... shut up already we get it you're a dinosaur stop <laughs> Rawr, okay <laughs> but i've always find jeff goldblum sexy in a really weird weird nerd guy kind of way so maybe he's weird know... and quirky yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh-huh I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> I don't know. You must have loved that scene when he's putting the water on her hand and he's teaching her stuff and she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's be there. Tell me more about this water droplet. Okay. <laughs> so you pick zombies, Carol? Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. They'd be funnier. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could probably develop some ridiculous game of like messing with zombies with like friends or something. You I'm could. sure you could. Of course. It might be more fun. Okay. Would you rather be captured by pirates or Old West cowboys? Oh my, what are these questions? <laughs> uh, it's Google. Oh God, Google, <laughs> Google has really let us down. Okay, what was the question? I, I started zoning out after. You heard pirate and you were like, ugh. Oh God. 
Would you rather be captured by pirates or Old West Cowboys? Pirates. Interesting. I don't really so, have a reason. What? You don't have a reason? <laughs> yeah, I feel like, no. I don't know. No, they probably smell. I pro- I'm Pir- ca- I mean, they both probably oh, smell. Yeah, cowboys. Either way. It's hot in the desert. But- Are these cowboys like... Like modern day cowboys or like old school cowboys? Courtney's eyeballs lit up a little bit. She's like <laughs> modern day cowboys? Well, the reason why I'm asking is because mm. I know pirates don't really exist today. Oh, yes. The way that I see pirates. I mean, they do. They but do. I'm just saying. You were all about the zombie question and those don't exist either. <laughs> zombies are real. You can be attacked. She's like, can I go back to my zombies now? <laughs> I just think pirates. I think that could, I mean, not pirates. I think cowboys. I think that could be more fun. I don't know. Yeah. I know. I they think like be more attractive. And... I don't know. I know. You know. Pirates are more in the capturing game. You know, you don't see yeah. uh, the, the, the cowboys lassoing a girl very often. You know, they're they're lassoing. And if they do, it's for inappropriate reasons. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't think the pirates would be much. capturing you for the appropriate reason. But I, I <laughs> at least I feel they would be skilled at the capturing game. And, you know, I would be in good hands. Mm. <laughs> Good. But don't you feel like if you got captured by a cowboy, you may be able to like outsmart him and escape a little bit easier than a pirate, like in the middle of the ocean? True. Maybe? True. Oh. And a lot of those cowboys look kind of dumb. So maybe you could outsmart them. <laughs> Just booze them up and get him distracted, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Keep pushing some beer toward them. Oh my God. Yeah. Run away. You know? Play achy breaky heart and get them line dancing. <laughs> They're all line dancing. <laughs> then you just set oh, out shit. the door when no one's looking. <laughs> like, didn't we have some lady captured here? They're like, yeah, it was like a week ago or something. I don't know. Achy <laughs> breaky hearts on repeat. I can't keep track of time. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you rather have visual hallucinations of the girl from The Ring oh. or from Freddy Krueger in your dreams? The Ring. I'm going to say The Ring, too. Uh, that Krueger is... Terrifying. I don't want shit in my dreams. Yeah. Get out of my dreams. messed up. Yeah. yeah. Because we know that in dreams, anything can happen. There's there's no rules. No. Limitless. Well, he's, yes. Mm-hmm. He's scary in dreams. I agree. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So it's Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Unanimous, right? Yeah. One more? I got one more. Okay. If you were trapped on a desert island and you can only bring three things with you, what would they be? Besides Eve's rib. Everybody go out and buy one. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I like that. You two <laughs> and some <laughs> cheese. <laughs> hey, I'm game. <laughs> and then mine will be you two and some wine. And then Courtney will have some variety. <laughs> you know, Courtney will bring like the meat tray and we'll yeah. have great options. Oh my God. <laughs> Absolutely. This is a fantastic idea. It's working out. It is really working out. <laughs> maybe Share. we'll get some, maybe we'll run some pirates. Who knows? Yeah. You know, I don't know. <laughs> They'll bring their booze that's buried in the sand, like yep. Jack Sparrow when he was found his rum. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. See? I think we got a good time going. I think it's fine. <laughs> Well, Carol, thank you again for hanging out with us and humoring our silliness with our dumb questions. Oh, well, they were they uh, weren't so dumb. <laughs> well, now I'm really going to be nice. thinking and my husband might have to dress up as a pirate tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited for you. I think Courtney's <laughs> husband's going to dress up as a zombie tonight. So, you know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Well, can you tell everybody where they can find you? Where can they find me? Um, I have a website called shekillslit.com. Mm-hmm. So uh, S-H-E-K-I-L-L-S-L-I-T, shekillslit.com. And um, there I post all about my new books, but I also mm-hmm. uh, do blogs not as often as I'd like these days, um, interviewing uh or reviewing uh, books by uh, women who write thrillers and scary books and noir and all sorts of fun stuff. My latest thing was uh, C.J. Cook, who I met in New York recently um, at the Edgar Awards, and she wrote The Lighthouse Witches, so also a witchy book. Uh, So check Mm -hmm. it out. Yeah, That's awesome. And we'll put your website and 
any of your other handles in our show notes too. So everybody can check that out and find you that way as well. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, thank you, Kara. It was great talking to you. And we hope we could chat with you again soon. Thank we you. love you. Oh, we love you thank too. You. Listen, I'm having you on the desert <laughs> island with me and, and the wheel of Yay. tea. What cheese and wine? I'll bring the wine. <laughs> we'll be set. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure as always. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Take care. Slash and cast.